I'm very proud to introduce Painter Master Greg Banning. And he actually happens to live in Ottawa, not too far from Corel's headquarters. So we get to see him more often than we do other masters. He has been a well-established professional illustrator for over 20 years. And he actually started out with traditional drawing and painting. And now he's able to apply those same principles to digital art creation, which is lucky for us in Painter 12. Um, I'm sure some of you have seen some of his work. His client portfolio is quite impressive, and it includes many major worldwide ad agencies, video game studios, and publishers. And the one that I'm sure you're familiar with is the re-imaging of the Brawny Man for Brawny Paper Towels. It's pretty hard to miss if you're in a paper product aisle in a store. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Painter Master Greg Banning. Oh, great. Thanks very much, Tanya. And uh, thanks, everyone, for coming out and joining me today. Um, I guess my goal today is basically just to go over uh, what I, how I use Painter and uh, a few of the things that I've learned over the years uh, with Painter. Um, I don't know if anybody wants me to sort of get into uh, talking about myself or how I started. Um, but I, uh, well, I just, how, how about I just actually tell you a little bit then. Um, I started off um, as a traditional illustrator uh, working with uh, uh, acrylics, um, markers, uh, a bit of oil paint, uh, a bit of watercolor. I've done a lot of different types of illustrations over uh, the past uh, 20 years or so. And uh, back in the late 90s, uh, I got into using Painter. Uh, so I, I sort of got into using it in the early days, in the early days of, uh, of the Macs. I think my first Mac was a G3. And uh, back in those days, uh, you basically just uh, imported your line drawing and uh, did some uh, coloring underneath and uh, flattened it and sent it off to a client to uh, burn it to a CD and uh, send it off to them. Uh, as things sort of evolved over the years, um, I was able to sort of uh, apply a traditional method um, to painting uh, with painter itself. Um, and today, I basically, it's just a tool for me today. Um, you know, Back uh, back when I started, uh, you know, it, it, it was you'd have to take a long time to to do an illustration. Uh, you'd have to wait for the paints to dry and things like that. Um, as well, if you're using markers, uh, you know, you have to put up with the fumes and you know even fumes with oil paints. And uh, with painter, um, you know, just dive in, um, you know use a brush tool that uh, would be like a watercolor brush tool that would uh, uh, be like an acrylic, a brush tool that uh, would look like an oil brush. And they all work together. You know, you could uh, use one on top of the other, which is uh, fantastic. Um, and so, you know, I, I just stayed basically with um, my style, I, I don't know, you know, people always say if you have, uh, you know, you have a certain style or, I, I don't really necessarily see a style in my work. I basically just, um, um, uh, you know, draw to my strengths um, and uh, use a style that uh, would, be, would be appropriate uh, for the type of illustration I'm working on at the time. Um, so I guess I'll just sort of just wrap this up about myself and then get into the painter. Um, so uh, I went to art school. Uh, I learned to draw and paint. Um, I hit the streets after college uh, trying to find work um, back in the 90s. And, uh, you know, up in Canada, we were, I think, in the U.S. too, there was uh, quite the recession going on. So it was really hard to find work. Uh, so I slugged it up for a couple of years. I, uh, I got into working at a, an ad agency in Toronto, uh, doing, uh, doing rendering. I did some art direction, anything. 
um, uh, I just worked hard uh, and I started uh, to supplement my income uh, by doing storyboards. Uh, back in those days, you'd use the markers and, and pens and, and whatnot. And uh, I got another job from that uh, at a studio, an art studio, and which was fantastic at the time because uh, there aren't any studios like that left anymore. And I was able to see some amazing artists at work and learn from them. Uh, and I uh, began to sort of start my career as a sort of a finished illustrator there. I started doing some odd jobs, uh, doing it throw me a, a bone once in a while and I finish it off and, and uh, look good. And uh, so I, you know, slowly built up my portfolio. Now, building with the portfolio and, and, and getting out there and working is, is uh, takes a long time. And uh, before I could start actually getting, you know, good work and continuous work, I would say it took me almost uh, eight years from <laughs> from school, you know, I was I was working though, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't getting big jobs, say like the Brawny Man or uh, you know Microsoft jobs and things like that. Um, so you know, I had to build up a portfolio and I had to compete with uh, uh, great illustrators that are that are out there. And uh, so, anyways, so I got into digital art, and here I am. And uh, so maybe we could uh, start talking about Peanut. Hey, I actually have a, a good question that relates to your movement to digital art. Do you feel yeah. that you lost anything moving from traditional to digital? Uh, headaches. Um, it, you know, it, it's different. It is different. Um, you know, painter has always been a tool for me. Um, and the way you use it is very similar to uh, natural media. But, but the thing that I do miss most is, you know, you know the things that did cause headaches and, and, and whatnot and is the smell. Uh, you know, I love, you know, the smell of paint and uh, actually the, the, the touch, uh, the touch of a brush on a canvas. Um, and uh, that, that's what I that's what I miss. Uh, but other than that, um, I can basically do what I want uh, in Painter and uh, make it look like a, you know that I you know hopefully uh, that I did it uh, by hand on, a, on an illustration board or a canvas. We've had a couple other questions come in, and I don't know if you were planning on covering this, but people are very interested in learning how you sketch in Painter and what tools are the best for sketching. Okay, well that, you know, that's a personal preference. Everybody has a, uh, has their preferences. Um, I'll just show you mine. I, I, I kind of did a little drawing here, or sketch of what I, what I tend to use. Okay, so I'll just show you what, what I have. I, I, I don't use too many too many brushes, uh, you know, you get your favorites and you kind of uh, stick to that. And there are certain um, uh, brush tools that I would use for certain types of jobs uh, over others. Uh, for instance, uh, if I was doing uh, storyboards, I have my custom tools right here and I created an inking pencil and I have the old um, uh, marker and I have another drawing pencil. And I basically just stick uh, to these pens right here. Uh, and they, you know, excuse me, I gotta, here. That's the marker. And it kind of builds up. And Command Z, your best friend, get rid of that. Um, and for the inking pencil, I have some texture to it. Okay, this is a bit of an older one. But, um, it gives you a variable line, but the main thing, the main ones I use uh, for doing illustration uh, would be the uh, chalk brush. Um, I, I kind of change the variance 
Uh, and I, what I like to do, uh, and what I prefer when I draw, is I like to build up. Um, I almost like to, I, I like to do a dry brush uh, technique, um, where, you know, I can st still see a drawing underneath, and I slowly build up where it becomes opaque and it covers up the drawing. And the chalk brush is great. I, I, I love the chalk brush for that. It's got a nice soft feel to it. And at the same time, you can press in and you can get some, something very opaque. Um, then I use something very similar, but for more detailed work, I use the uh, pencil crayon or my colored pencil. And once again, I change the variant. And when I change the variants on, on the brushes, it's, it's not much. I, 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 I basically lower the opacity and I increase the grain. Um, once again, it's, it's, it's for creating a dry brush feel and look. And so here's the pencil crayon. I don't know if you can see that, but you know, if you get in really detailed areas. And then the, uh, the sketching pencil that I use, it's more of a, a bolder line. And, and I do use this for uh, rendering to storyboards. It's got a variable uh, line weight to it, uh, which is nice. And it's, uh, it's opaque. Uh, and uh, one of my go-to brushes, which I like to build up a, a painting with, is the digital watercolor. Um, and you just, I just kind of block in everything quickly with uh, local color using the digital watercolor. And what I like to do with it now is, is I use the uh, uh, gentle wet eraser. And when I apply the watercolor, I'll just demo that quickly. There's, there's the digital watercolor. And then uh, I kind of erase out as I need need to with a gentle eraser and then I dry it if I can do this there's my and by drying it I can go on top oh, switch and let's forget that no, I'm still on that what is it there we go no oh, I didn't dry it excuse me there you go And you, you just build and you dry it again, and you build it some more, dry it again, build it some more, uh, and you can race out of it, get details that way. And I just kind of build up uh, uh, the color uh, in that method most of the time. And then uh, after that's dried, I go on top with an opaque um, uh, tool like the chalk. And I start adding a bit more detail over the line work and over the, uh, the, the local color. Uh, the next pencil I like, or brush tool, is the cover pencil. See that? And uh, the dry brush, which is a uh, variant on the uh, acrylic dry brush. And uh, it gives a nice painterly look. And for everything, when I'm building color is I always go back to the uh, just add water blender and that way I can work the color then to each other and uh, you know uh, get a nice soft look uh, to uh, uh, to my paint strokes. Any other questions? Yeah I should have asked you this at the beginning but what type of tablet are you using? I'm using the Intrus uh, Wacom number five, or what do you call it? Intrus okay. five. Yeah, the Intrus five. That's it. And the other question that we always get relates to um, what PPI do you set your documents up at to begin with, and then do you use Painter? I know Painter's does it really nicely, upsizing after. Yeah, great question, actually. Uh, I was going to touch on that uh, later because I, okay. uh, let me just show you something I've been working on. Uh, let's call this up here. Um, I, 
I was kind of hoping to get this done for today, but I uh, don't want to send it out. But excuse me, but I didn't quite. There it is. I didn't quite get it done. Um, but it was it was really interesting because I, I started this as a as as practice, um, and then it, it's kind of was turning out to be something uh, a bit better, and I wanted to put a bit more work on it. But why I started out just blocking it in at at 200 DPI. Uh, and at a, at a small size, I don't know what the size this is. Uh, yeah, 10 by, 10 by uh, 9, basically, 200. And as I would, and it was quick, it, it's very quick to, um, uh, to work this way at uh, 200. And um, so I'm just blocking in some color and you know especially for digital watercolor and if I was using the acrylic dry brush uh, the paint goes on very nicely it's not too slow and and, and, and it has a lot to do with your computer I, I have eight gigs of, uh, of RAM uh, and, I'm, and I'm actually working on a MacBook Pro 17 inch uh, and so Power wise, it's for me. It's it's good enough for uh, Corel Painter 12, and but the more layers you add and the higher DPI, you, it, you know, just and if you have other things open, if I have iTunes open or something else, things kind of block down. So I, I usually tend to uh, start this way: start at a lower DPI, get everything blocked in, and then. What for the final details, you know, I go to 300 dpi, and I, I think I also increase the, uh, oh no, it's still uh, 10 by 9. Oops, I think I'm going to run into problems with that. <laughs> I think I should have made it a little bit bigger. Uh, but anyway, so it, I was able to go back in and uh, add more detail. I don't know if that answers your question. No, yeah, that's that was a great answer. Um, Renee is wondering: Are your brush palettes available for download? No. <laughs> okay. I guess you can make them available if you want them. Okay. And then, of the, course, I get. I'm done joking. Yes, of course, <laughs> I can make them available. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you really want them, but you can have them if you want. Them. And do you use any other pro any other painting programs at all, or do you just stick with Painter? Painter, uh, you know, I, even even the tools I use they're very simple, and you know, for me, Painter is very simple to use. I know it can be kind of intimidating, and I kind of grown up with uh, with Painter, um, but. You know, I, I'm always amazed uh, how some people can paint uh, in Photoshop, and um, you know that boggles my mind. So, uh, because I just know Painter has just a better, um, uh, you know, workflow. I think I don't know. You can build a workflow, obviously, for Photoshop, uh, but for me, um, I guess I'm old-fashioned. I, I I just stick to what I know. Any other questions, Tanya? There, um, there's a question asking, is there anything like Indian ink? And I don't think I'm familiar enough with Indian ink to know a permanent color good for sketching and painter. Um, I just was hmm. wondering if you had an answer for that. Uh, like a type of Indian ink, like you mean uh, an ink brush or like a... Well, there's, you know. I, I we'll we'll think hold think on that one. We can. There come is. That one. Uh, there, yeah, I don't personally uh, use it. Uh, the one I do use is I use a scratch board tool, which could be found in the uh, uh, in the uh, pen selection in the pen category, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of illustrators uh, tend to use this. 
this brush because it gives you such a value, uh, variable uh, uh, line and it builds up nicely. And then you can go back in and uh, use the blender to soften things. But that's a, that's a nice tool. But the other, the other, you know, as specifically Indian ink, no, I don't know too much about that. Does anybody want to see some, like, the process of how I've done an illustration or how the workflow that I go through to, to do an illustration? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, okay, let's, let's get into it. Um, all right, so unfortunately this one isn't done. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> I, still, I have still a lot of problems to work out, but... Uh, um, We'll see what happens with that. I uh, I went into my archives and uh, I dug out some some older stuff. And uh, let's see. Oh yeah, this this might be kind of interesting. Uh, I did a little Santa Claus for Canada Post up here, and I'm going to show you some of the uh, reference material that I, I used and. Uh, my pencil and uh, I came up with a finish. So, uh, you know, when they when somebody approaches you and you know, I don't know what everybody's level is, so I'm just you know, just going to say people come in, uh, the client will come in with the request. Uh, they give you some time to come up with some ideas, um, and you work out some sketches, and then they kind of like a sketch, and you go from that sketch and you build it up and and then you go to a pencil, and then you go to a colored pencil, and then you go to, why is it not opening? Okay, here we go. So here, uh, here's some uh, just quick little thumbnails I did for, uh, uh, for the project. And they kind of uh, liked a certain one. They didn't want Santa Claus to be scary. They wanted it to be fun and, 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 and interesting. Uh, you don't want to scare Santa Claus. So I kind of came up with the idea where Santa Claus is kind of hiding from the kids. And uh, he's, he's, he's looking at the viewer and telling him to be uh, quiet. And... Uh, I don't know. It, it, we, I had to design it uh, to fit, uh, to fit obviously uh, copy and text and and whatnot, and give them lots of lead. And so I decided uh, to do everything a certain way as a vignette, or to do it as a vignette. So that was the idea that we uh, that I started from. And now from this idea. Um, I would uh, start looking for reference. And uh, most of the time, um, I, I'd have to shoot my own uh, because you know it's, it's obviously quicker. And the great thing about shooting your own reference is you're in control of the lighting. And I, I would say that lighting is, uh, especially for an, uh, an illustration, is uh, very important. Um, especially if you're kind of doing a Norman Rockwell, uh, you can do a lot with the shadows. Uh, and the shadows basically draw the image for you. If you can draw the shadows, you basically you, you have an image. You've got to get the values in there. So anyways, here's the sketch. And from that sketch, I uh, hired uh, some models. I found this great guy uh, to be Santa Claus. He's, he actually does it for a living. He's, a, he, uh, he's actually a modeling agency that uh, uh, he's actually hired as as a Santa Claus. Um, you know, great face, great eyes. I would see I'd see some photos of him beforehand before hiring him, and he came with his own costume, which was great. But the guy was actually quite skinny for a Santa Claus. So I had him put a uh, a pillow in this costume. And uh, then the search for the kids. <laughs> you know, it's kind of it's kind of funny. Uh, that's the old story. Uh, don't work with animals or, or children, but uh, uh, most 
most of the time. They're really good. It's, they're pretty professional. But this girl was so cute. Um, she, I was actually, I, I didn't necessarily hire her directly. Uh, I hired her brother, and uh, she came, and uh, she was really cute and uh, very young. And, and so I got her to 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 pose in the in, in the painting, and uh, just just very fun. But she was all over the place. <laughs> but it was it was a good day. Um, and from that, I came up with, and so this, this was the initial pencil. It's very hard for me to look at now because I draw kind of differently. And uh, um, yeah, that, this is obviously uh, 10 years old. So, But this was the initial drawing that uh, I submitted. And uh, where's Santa Claus? I'll just show you the... Uh, Oh, I got a combination. Here you go. So, Greg, um, from start to finish, you know, you you work with all these models and to your finished sketch. How much time does it usually take you to create a complete illustration? Okay, I think uh, I'm I'm I don't really know <laughs> per se. You know, I I see so many guys. I got a lot of friends. Uh, you know, Mike Thompson, uh, Greg Newman, and, and, you know, so many other guys that I used to work at, uh, work with in, in, in Toronto, and, and uh, I'm amazed by, by how fast they work. Um, it depends. When I, when I, if I have really good reference, uh, it doesn't take me too long uh, to do drawing. Um, the hard part, the, the time that takes the, the most time is, is, is just gathering everything and you know people want something realistic and I'm always saying well if you want a realistic I, I need to do this I need to do that and, that and it's going to take me a bit more time um, so after after everything is gathered and I figured out you know how I'm going to put it together um, you know it, it's just quickly you know literally Tracing, I do a quick trace of, you know, I'll just show you. Um, oops, I did that wrong. Well, if there's, I, if there's anything that I'm, I'm kind of going on about, let me know if you want me to, uh, if you want to direct me to. Uh, some questions came Question. about colors and textures, but I'll let you go yeah. and show this. Well, sorry, what was the question? Yogita was wondering how you create perfect skin colors, and there was also a question just about um, can you actually create a painting that looks like a real acrylic, or how do you add texture to various layers, if you would do indeed do that in your paintings, um, yeah. how is that accomplished? Okay, yeah, um, it's just you know a quick outline, uh, and then you just add tone to that. Um, so, sorry, what was the first question again? The the first question was. I should just give you one at a time. Sorry. Um, so, okay. perfect skin colors. Do you work with a certain color palette? Or paint as uh, yeah yeah yes I do um, for these kind of illustrations uh, you know I borrowed um, I borrowed from the best um, you know Norman Rockwell a lot of the classic classic illustrators this this yeah sometimes another thing about digital is is sometimes the colors get off after a while after you save them in so many different formats so this girl's face is a little darker than it should be, but his skin tone was supposed to be darkened because, uh, you know, we just want to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, we have like a multicultural feel and, and uh, I don't know if that works or not, but getting back to the skin tone, uh, you know, just looking up Norman Rockwell, uh, you know, researching, uh, 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 I'm trying to think of, and it's terrible, I can't remember the uh, Santa Claus sculpture. Oh, God. Sun blue. Uh, just seeing their colors. And I think at the time, I, I, I might have uh, 
just took an image from the web um, and uh, you know just color selected. You know, you get the color selection, and then I set up a uh, a color library. You know, I tend to, yeah. See, this is here's a color li library uh, specifically for classic pinup. Uh, you know, I hadn't done one yet, but um, I think I was, I was planning on working on on one. And I, I got all my basic skin tones there. And then after a while, after you're working on a, on a painting and you got everything blocked in, you got your local color and everything blocked in, I, I just color select on the, on the image itself as, as I'm working along. And, uh, and if I like a certain color, um, I'll save it to my color set um, so I can get back to using it again. I know a lot of guys, uh, or a lot of people, a lot of illustrators that um, you know tend to on on another layer, on a separate layer, they they put their colors right there, so it's quick, and easy access. Yeah, I've seen Mike Thompson do that. Yeah. Mike Thompson does that mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit, which is a great, it's a great technique. Uh, but I, for me, uh, I have a tendency of dropping it, or you know, dropping it down <laughs> on the canvas, or you know, my my head's everywhere when I'm when I'm working. So uh, for me, for safety's sake, you, you know, I guess you can lock it, um, and you just color select it. That way, if you lock it. You're not going to be able to draw on it or or move it around. You can't do that. So uh, if you do this, uh, just make sure you uh, lock the layer. We're all dying to know how you created that Santa reflection. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's been a long time. Uh, no, that's pretty easy. That's uh, I think um, I used uh, Photoshop uh, at the time. I guess this was uh, uh, ten years ago, or what have you. Or I could have used maybe even uh, the transform layer in 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 uh, in Painter at the time. But I, I think. Because at that time, uh, the transform layer in Photoshop was a bit more robust, and I could do a bit more of a sharper angle and uh, tweak things a bit, a bit better at the time. But now, you know, uh, you could do the same thing in, in Painter using the transform tool. Gives you the same uh, the same effect, and for something like that, uh, just very quick, it, I'll just show you. Uh, it's not hard. Uh, I'll just select Santa here. Um, hit the adjusting tool, uh, holding down Option Command, click that, and what that does is it uh, layers Santa or that selection above the canvas, but it keeps uh, the original. Santa there. I didn't cut him out. I just made a copy of, my, of the selection. Um, and then you just flip it. You should select the... Okay. Okay. And so um, there you go. I got a mirror image of, uh, of Santa Claus. And just lower the opacity. I'm just going to do this really quick um, and free transform. Because it's just, he's at a sharper angle, so we have to reflect that. <laughs> reflect. And holding the option key on my Mac. And control now. See, at the time, the earlier version of Painter, you can really do this very well on the transform tool. Now, uh, transform is uh, just fine. 
Okay, so there you go. There, there's reflection. That's how I would have done it at the time. And, uh, you know, with all those edges and stuff. And, and this is another great tool. Actually, this is a fantastic tool to use. It's an eraser, uh, especially on layers. And I have uh, different types of erasers. I got a real soft eraser. I got an erase very hard, uh, which kind of, you know, slowly takes away the image. And uh, I just have a normal eraser. And, uh, and now I just go in and take out the excess. Very cool, Greg. Okay. While you're erasing okay. there, um, there was another question from Trevor, and he's wondering, as you're painting, do you keep each element, let's say, you know, the little girl on a layer, Santa on a layer, just in case the client wants to change colors or something like that? No. No? I don't. Okay. Um, I, what I do is I, I have a tantrum right away uh, if they want to do that um, and I say no <laughs> you can't do that uh, no it's yeah no I can't, I, I can't because I my my whole perception to this is that um, I'm not actually doing digital art um, there's a lot of requests now for can you do this guy on a layer can you do this can you put this on a layer can you put this on a layer um, and yes, I could put it on a layer, but it's going to take me a lot more time uh, because I don't work that way. I, I want to have the drawing as one piece. I want to be able to make um, everything part of the environment. Um, I tend to uh, always do the back. I always work for the background out. Uh, just to get a sense of, uh, of, of the color and how uh, the color that I'm using, uh, say, the local co color plays off the background color. And it just it adds a cohesiveness to the whole image. And if I did that, if I did each thing on, on layers, I, I wouldn't do that. It, it, would, it, I, I wouldn't, I, it would, to me, feel more cut out. Uh, but I, you know, I, I'm sure people do it all the time, and I, it's just personal preference. Uh, you know, on occasion, uh, like when I'm doing a job, uh, people ask for this, you know, weird changes. Uh, but uh, you know, when I'm when I'm uh, quoting a job, um, I always stipulate, you know, after approval, uh, after the pencils have been approved, uh, we go on to the finished version. So if they want to make changes after the, the pencil has been approved, it's not really my fault. It's what they want to do. And I'm more than willing to, uh, to help them out. But that's going to be a change. And you know, I'll, I'll probably ask for uh, some more money to, uh, to make those changes. Because a lot of this stuff too is, is very quick. Like they want a, a quick turnaround, uh, you know, within uh, a week and a half. And you know, so it's very you know, after you collect all your reference material, you do color studies, you do your uh, your drawing. Um, you know, you that doesn't leave you much time to do uh, the finished uh, version. Uh, so you're, you're basically working to that deadline, and if they want to change that deadline, it's, it's up to them. There's a question. Um, I don't know. Do you ever use the glow tool or any of the surface lighting effects, or do you manually yeah. paint? Oh, you do? Okay. Yes. I, I do. I, I do. Here. Uh, let's go back to that old uh, uh, that Elfie one I was working on. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just show you a, a few little uh, tips I've uh, used, and, and actually I did this earlier on on his face. Uh, his face was was a bit darker. As as I as it built up uh, the drawing, and um, I did him the, the the larger version of him earlier, 
And then I went to, after I found some more good reference of, of him uh, in this, this uniform, I started getting more and more detail and I started popping up the colors on him. And that started making his face darker. And just a quick little fix. Uh, let me just clone this so I don't uh, mess this up. And uh, let's kind of pretend here. Okay. So his face might have been like this a little bit. It's a little darker now, as you can see, right? Um, um, I could either do this if, I, if I'm working on a, if a specific area. I'll, I'll show you different different ways I'll, I would handle something like this, depending how much time I have or how detailed I want to get. But uh, again, uh, Option Command uh, using uh, the Just tool, uh, layer his top parts. Um, see, okay. So for uh, Using the glow brush, it's right here. And um, let's get back to the color wheel. And so I wanted to sort of lighten his face or get more of a highlight on his face. Uh, make sure I'm looking on the top layer. And uh, play with the opacity. It lightens everything. And then I'd go in with my eraser and I would get out the bits that I still want to sort of keep in shadow. Is that, uh, is that showing up on the screen okay? Yeah, it is. Okay. So you see the, you see the difference there? And I'm, at, I'm actually drawing with the uh, the, the eraser uh, brush, just for bringing back uh, some of the value. I'm drawing, I'm drawing out of the, the highlight. Do you? Okay, so that's that's one that's one way of doing it. Okay. Uh, another way. Can I just show you this quickly? Sure. Uh, uh, another way is uh, just gonna layer up there um, overlay uh, take the airbrush tool and I want to lighten the face it kind of changes the color too it, 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 get, it gives you the uh, the hue lightens up as well and so you can do it that way, and again, you take your eraser brush, get out your detail, and the other way, let's clear that again, um, is this is this is a, what I, I kind of do at the end of uh, an illustration as well is. If, if I'm looking at the whole thing and uh, it looks kind of dull to me, uh, I want to pop things up and uh, I do a few adjustments and and what I do is I go to uh, uh, total control and I go to equalize. You see that instant definition? I could bring in, pop the darks a bit more, hit the highlights. And it does the job for me. Uh, take the eraser tool. Again, erase out. Keep the bits you want or, or you want to keep dark. Less contrasty. Getting all that stuff around this helmet. Okay, so you see, see the difference right away? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. 
You just made me laugh. And uh, again, if I wanted to select all, F, let's see what it looks like. I'm going to use, I'm using the whole, the whole image now. And I can play with the contrast. Another light, which is not the way to go. Um, but you have so much control of this. And here's the difference from underneath. See, it's just a bit brighter. It's a little, it's a little too bright. It's a little too saturated here. But uh, this is just for uh, demo purposes. And, and sometimes if the colors do get a little um, too saturated, I just go in and uh, desaturate them. Uh, just go uh, just color. And just cut down the uh, saturation. There you go. Okay, great. Any more questions, or did I? I think there's a lot of that question. Yeah, that answered it. And to finish things off, this would make sense. Um, okay. Everyone's wondering how do you ensure that your colors remain accurate when you're going from painter to printing. Is there any calibration tool that you use or advice? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, since uh, since I started uh, using Painter to do finished art, uh, I went through uh, some some major major headaches at the time uh, uh, getting my digital. It has nothing to do with Painter. It is just the digital work at the time uh, going to traditional printers. Um, I, I at the time I would uh, supply. Uh, I'd have to give everything as a CMYK, con convert my image to CMYK, um, put it on a disk, uh, send the disk. Because you know the internet, you couldn't really send images, uh, large images, to uh, to to people uh, on the internet at the time. So I'd have to make sure the high res version was on a on a disk. Supply the disk. Um, and then supply a printed version from my that's calibrated to my desktop. Uh, so usually, most likely, the uh, printed version would look at it would look as the image would look on the screen. And I would tell you know the printer match this the best they can. And most 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 times they did. But where I had problems uh, was working with uh, international clients, like in, you know, mostly in the states, uh, where I'd send the digital copy off, but I, I, I couldn't get the um, I couldn't get the, uh, the hard copy to them, and so like I saw some of my work, like cool colors were crazy. I just uh, I couldn't believe it. Um, so yeah, I had to be very careful at the time, but now and, and then I would calibrate it in uh, Photoshop at the time. Uh, but now I don't know what it is. I don't know if printers are, are more used to using digital work, but uh, it's funny. I I sent off uh, an RGB um, high res JPEG, and I've seen beautiful jobs done of, of the printing. Uh, just sending that off directly uh, from Painter. I had I. I I didn't need to import it or, uh, into Photoshop to color correct it. So, you know, things have changed. It's just getting better. But, uh, yeah, I would always supply uh, the client with a hard copy of, uh, of your artwork just to make sure that they're seeing what you're seeing because uh, everybody's screen uh, is calibrated differently. Okay, terrific. Well, I guess we're running out of time. Yeah, well, we've kept you longer than you needed to be here, and I appreciate it. Oh, it's okay. If there's any more questions, i got nothing to do today. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> if there's anything else quickly uh, I can answer, or do you want to wrap this up? I'm, I'm just waiting to see if anything's coming in here. Um, I think we pretty much covered off most of the questions that came through. So, and no one's entering anything else right now. Okay, great.
All right. Well, thank you so much. There was lots of valuable tips in here that we haven't covered off in other webinars. So this was a really great session. Thanks to everyone for joining us. So thanks a lot, Greg. Well, and thank you. And uh, thank you, everybody, for taking the time to uh, come to this webinar. We should remind thank everyone you. to go to gregbanning.com to learn more about Greg. And then there's also a written tutorial under our resources tab that um, Greg has created. If you kind of want to replay some of the tips that he's shown here today, there is that written tutorial. So with that, we'll go ahead and end the webinar and hope to see you guys next time. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.